What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am so super stoked and excited to have you here with me again today. Now I'm going to come off of the plans I had because I did get a request in the comments of a uh, previous video asking me to show you guys how to create a LUT for LumaFusion. Now it's a really, really simple process and I'm going to love just diving in and showing you. The app I'm going to use today on my computer is uh, called Affinity Photo. It is available on a uh, it is available on an iPad. It's about a fifty dollar app. Now, if you go to their website, they do uh, a lot of times run specials that you can only get if you download directly from their website. So I'll link that in the description so you can go check it out. If you want to do this on your tablet or on your phone for free then the, there is an app called Video LUT that currently, as of the time I'm recording this, is a free app. And it's literally the exact same steps. So either one of those will work and you will get the same great look that we're gonna get here today. So let's go ahead. Wait, before I jump into the video, guys, I just wanna say, if you have anything you wanna see me do, put it in the comments. I will stop what I'm, whatever I'm in the process of making and I will go ahead and make that video for you. Now I am going to be uploading a little bit slowly here for the next couple of weeks because I did just start a new job and my schedule is all over the place while I'm in training. So if you don't get a lot of videos for me, that's why, but please stick around because as soon as I get a schedule routine in, I'm gonna come back and start doing videos more regularly again. All right, let's go ahead and jump into LumaFusion and let's make our LUT. Okay, so here I picked an, uh, an old video from LumaFusion 101, one of the first videos I did. And because I thought this was really a good place to start, I shot this in Log Profile. For those that don't know, Log basically is an algorithmic way of uh, the lens capturing the footage so that you get a broad spectrum of color and you can do a lot more um, color grading and color correcting with it and it looks a little bit crisper and clearer. Now, if you're not used to shooting in log, just go ahead and shoot in the native camera app or in anything like that, because once you start working with log, it becomes harder to use the others because you want to do things that you can't do with those. But if you're still at a beginning stage and you're creating, you're doing this so that you can create a LUT to make your color grading easier, then stick with the native camera it will work better for you every time. Okay, so I need to find the best spot here. And you want something that just looks there. So I'm looking straight ahead. I have a good coverage overall of my face. I have the background in pretty well. Pretty much everything is really crisp and visible. And this would be a good place to start when creating a LUT. So there's two ways we can do this. We can offload it directly as it is, which is the flat profile, which is what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna show you also, if you are not used to color grading and you wanna start with something that's already set up, then we can throw it in here just like this, throw a lot on to uh, take the flat out of it, brighten it a bit, Bring up our sh bring our shadows back up and desaturate and there you go. There's a good starting point. So we could use this one or we could use it with nothing on it, which I'm gonna go ahead and use it with nothing on there. So once you're at that spot where you want it to be, just go ahead down here and go to your export button. Mm. All right, it is messing with me because this clip uploaded back to YouTube or back to iCloud and I don't care. Where were we at? We were at one minute and I think one frame. Yeah, there's where we were. Okay, so hit your export button and just snapshot. And it's literally just going to send what's on the screen to your Photos app. And there, it's that fast and then it's done. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up Affinity Photo and go ahead and close that first 
if you're doing it on a computer, close that first box that comes up. I'm not sure what it looks like on an iPad because I don't have an iPad. So, um, And then you want to come here and you want to import, actually, you want to open. Now, I went ahead and I took my snapshot out of my Photos app and I put it on my desktop just because I don't want to open my Photos app on YouTube. And there we go. There is our photo exactly the way it looked. All right, and then you want to come over here to the right to your adjustments, and you want to go to your levels, hit default, and we're going to bring, again, we're going to bring our shadows up with this and pull out some of our highlights. And you have your histogram here on it, so that is going to help you to, you're really just going to try to bring it into where you have on your input side, you want to bring it into where you have data. You don't really necessarily need to bring anything from over here unless you just want to. Like we do have some blues over here, so I'm going to bring that up a little bit too. Okay, so that looks like a good starting point. Now we're gonna check our white balance. And remember your white balance is your shift from blue to orange or blue to yellow or really, it's really blue to red. Um, this is considered to be cool and this is considered to be warm. Now I know that this light back here is blue. You can see a little bit of it right here. So, and you see the, all the blue that is off to the side. So we do want to make sure that we're not really getting rid of that. And you want to use your histogram here. What is the morning? There we go. You want to use your histogram here and just see that you are lining the colors up really well. Now you can hit your picker here and then just find the brightest white spot and your white balance will automatically change to that, or you can adjust it to taste. I'm going to put a little bit more warmth into my face. And so there's our white balance and our levels. Your HSL, this is tweaking every individual color. We're going to come back to that. First thing we want to do is we want to come to our brightness, wait, black and white? No. A brightness and contrast and because of it being that flat profile or that log profile it does take a lot of the contrast out of the image and it was a pretty dark image so we're gonna brighten it up just a bit and bring some of that contrast back in now you see we're starting to get a little bit of better color in my face here so now we want to go to vibrance and as, as you guys know, I usually pull a lot of the saturation out of my face and focus mostly on the vibrance because that's the colors other than the uh, skin tones. The channel mixer, you can literally just control how much of each color. Just know that when you tweak one color, it affects the others. We're actually, we reset our color mixer. We're just going to leave that alone. I don't want a color a channel mix around here. Now we're going to come back. And we'll re no, we're going to our HSL. That's what I want. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open an HSL. And we're really just going to tweak each individual color. So remember I said we have some blue back here that we're not seeing very well. So let's go ahead and we want to saturate those blues a little bit. And we want to pull the luminosity down some. There we go. And the lighter blues, we're going to darken up. And we're going to do the same thing. Saturate a little bit. Pull back that luminosity. And you can, again, use your picker, pick one particular spot, and you can refine it in here. And 
And I don't know if you're seeing these tiny little adjustments that I'm making, but they are actually helping a lot. This one you're gonna see, because it's red, you're gonna see it more in my face. Well, let's do the overall color first. So we're gonna more heavily saturate. Now let's go into the reds. And watch what happens when we pull the luminosity back. See how that darkens my face up a lot? And my beard becomes a little bit more red. I like that. I'm gonna do the same thing here with the pink. So we can pull some of that blue out. Like I said, you can use these to refine. Or you can just click on your color picker. Now, what you'll notice here, watch as I saturate. It's gonna saturate pretty much everything in this range. So you've gotta be careful with that. You are affecting a wide range. And we can actually just pull everything back into here. This is really where your the range that you are adjusting is right there. So now you see it doesn't do as much on my face as it was, so I can heavily saturate that hat. There we go. And the greens, you may not notice that there's green in there, but you see the shift as I do this. So just know that just because you don't see a color in there doesn't mean it's not in there. And then of course our shadows and highlights. So just know that when you do this, you're gonna have to go back into your contrast and add a little bit more contrast back in there. Exposure, you can pull the exposure back a bit if it's too dark and bring it up if it's too light. All right, now we're going to play inside the color curve. Now, this is literally this is what a log profile does is it adjusts this curve to give you a more uh, refined look. So, we're going to play around in here a little bit just to try to get some better color. So, we're not really going to worry about the mask. Well, no, we're not going to worry. Let's take a look at the master. So you want to make sure you have three points to adjust. This is going to be your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. So if we bring our shadows back, bring our highlights up. So now we've done our color correction, by the way. Everything I did before was to get that nice color correction in, that nice set color that you would have automatically when you put on a uh, D-Log LUT. So we got it to that point. Now we're going to be playing with the color and creating our stylized look. That's what we're gonna do with the curves. And now we're gonna go to red. And you got you have to think about when you're doing this, where are your colors? So red is gonna be a lot of our mid-tones. So if we increase those mid-tones, we increase that red in the mid, you see it's increasing a lot of color there. So you want to be very careful with what you do. You don't want a lot of the red, or sorry. Well, just play as you go. Find out where you want to put it. And look at your histogram again while you're doing it. And remember that every color you add or subtract will affect the other colors around. And if, and look, if you go too far, you're going to break it. So it's really little minuscule tweaks that you're going to do here. Green. Again, like I said, you may not think there's green in that color, but or in that picture, but look, you see a decent amount in there. And our shadows, I'm almost always gonna pull down because that's this. That's the dark areas around the edges that I want to keep looking kind of like that. And blues. Let's do mostly mid-tone adjustments in our blues. And 
Now you see how it's making that light over there show up a little better. Now you see that blue of the light. You see what I'm talking about? <clears throat> okay. And now we'll look at our channel mixer again. So now, when we adjust this, we're going to have this ability to create more stylized looks on there. So now we have a pretty good, even if it is a slight dark or slightly overexposed image, which again, we can come back in <clears throat> excuse me, to our exposure and we can really just pull that back a stop or two. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good image to start with. Um, we can continue to play with all kinds of things in here. We can put in a gradient map. <clears throat> we can do the selective color where you're literally just making tweaks to each individual color within. So if you wanted to create, say, a one of the, um, the, the teal and orange loads, you would do it in here by playing around with these into, or, yeah, teal and orange. And, you know, you start with your reds. You have every color in here you can do one by one. Your greens you're going to want to bring to this. Now you see we're creating more of that stylized look. We're just, we're playing around with everything. And we're just seeing what we like. I personally, I think this is a great look to have. So we're going to go with this. So what we're going to do now is you come up here to file and under file go down to export what now what stands for lookup table and what it's going to do really is it's going to look at all of the pixels in here it's going to see where each one is it's going to just create this algorithm so that any if i put this on an image it's going to put all of those color adjustments onto that image mathematically and so you have to know that a lot is not going to be a, a, a what am I trying to say? A lot is not going to be a quick fix every single time. It's not going to be a perfect adjustment. It's going to perfectly adjust those colors to the way the LUT is set up, but it is going to depend on a plethora of factors. What do you have underneath? What colors did you use when you were filming? So you can't just film everything and create a LUT and think it's going to automatically make what you filmed look exactly the way you filmed it. So you have to keep those changes and adjustments that you might make in mind. So what I would do if I was trying to use this as just a lot to stylize an already corrected look is I would go and I would go into LumaFusion first and I would use the original palette and I would correct and, or yeah, I would color correct it and bring it to this level. Or if you're using um, your native camera app, find the adjustments you want to the brightness, the saturation and everything. And then I would export one of those. I would set, save that as a preset in LumaFusion, save your color palette as a preset, export um, your video, your clip, come in here, create a stylized LUT. And then every time I was grading one of my YouTube videos, I would first put, use that preset and then I would throw this LUT on top. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if that doesn't make sense and I'll try to clarify what I'm saying. But let's go ahead and come back in here and we're gonna export our LUT and we're gonna name our LUT stylized. And it gives you this, hold on. It gives you this kind of <clears throat> idea of what it's gonna do to every photo or to this basic set photo. And you want to make sure it is set to format of dot cube and you just go ahead and hit export. Uh, I'm going to save this onto my desktop. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And now let's go back into LumaFusion and let's open up our file here, our video clip here. And then we want to come to where you see the down arrow. Click on that guy. Um, I believe iOS is the one. 
that I want to find. Yes. Go to my desktop. And you see stylize.cube. Go ahead and open that guy up. And there we go. It just dropped our stylized LUT right on top of our video. And we have a pretty close assessment. Now you can adjust the blending and then you can come back in once you've done the LUT. And I can come in here and make some other tiny little adjustments here and there. Bring your brightness down some. Contrast in there, we'll bring that brightness down. And there we go, that's a pretty good look. Cool it off a little bit, warm it up, whatever you want to do. Once you have your LUT on, then you can make your adjustments however you want to make them and create the video you want. I really hope this helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments if it did or not. Like I said, this is, you can do the same um, process in Video LUT, which is a free application. But if you had the option of downloading Affinity Photo, I would go for it. it it's, it's basically, there's so much more you can do in that program than just creating a LUT. It's basically Photoshop and Lightroom in one location. It's, it's a combination of the two. So if you do a lot of photo work, Affinity is a great uh, post-processing tool for photos. So definitely, definitely take a look at it if you can afford it. If, like, and like I said, they do a sale every now and then. I bought mine for $25. So if you have the opportunity, definitely go in and grab Affinity Photo while you can. It's definitely worth every penny. It and LumaFusion together and then you get Blitz Free now that 3.0 has the uh, plugins available and you're gonna get basically an unstoppable editing force. That's all I got for you guys. If you got anything out of this, go ahead and hit the like button. Make sure while you're there, you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified the next time I upload. It may be a week or so before I get another video out. Like I said, I'm just starting a new job, but this is still a priority. I still do enjoy doing these videos for you. So let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And until then, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, keep editing, and God bless. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.